I know we're only a few weeks into collision, but I hate to be the... No, I don't hate to be the guy. Because whatever needs to be said needs to be fucking said in an environment full of AEW stands and shills and fanboys where you're not even going to get that real dope or that objective kind of opinion. You're going to get that from me. This shit, while the presentation feels better than Dynamite, at the end of the day, feels largely like a waste of time, just like Dynamite. For the life of me, I cannot understand how it could be so hard to find interesting stories to tell. To have some fucking rivalries that actually are interesting. The hell is so hard about this? I know. Because you've got a hardcore mark like Tony Khan writing and booking this shit. He don't know what the fuck he's doing when it comes to half this stuff. Oh, yes, he does. I love AEW. Fuck you. You would do no worse than he would with the money and resources he has behind him that aren't even his to fucking begin with. Get over this cult of con. It's fucking ridiculous. Because all you're doing with this show is giving us two more hours of crap that's largely a waste of damn time. It's not going anywhere. It's just fucking filler. There's no way you could watch that show and think that this isn't largely fucking filler. I'm just saying. Like MJF opens this show up. Hey, you got the world champion kicking off the show. He quickly squashes a Hamilton jobber. A Hamilton, Ontario jobber. And then you wonder, okay, where do they go from here? And here comes Ethan Page. To kind of answer MJF's challenge that he would take on anybody in Hamilton from in Hamilton, and there you go. And this is a really good spot for Ethan Page. Like this was a moment for him, and he delivered as a babyface, believe it or not. Like you saw the intensity, you saw the passion. Like he, he was ready to fight. That was a good showing for him. Of course, it's not gonna go any fucking where. There'll be no follow-up to it. And Ethan Page will be quickly forgotten about again. Um, but that's what you come to expect out of AEW, frankly, when they're trying to feature too many fucking people on too large of a roster. My only real gripe with this whole shit is, and it's the same shit WWE does too, and I understand you got to pay the bills and you're at the behest of the network in some respects, but I really, really, really hate when world title matches have television commercials. Even if you want to say the picture in picture, I hate that shit. It's a world title match. It needs to be bell to bell, period. Powerhouse Hobbs versus Dustin Rhodes in one of the Owen Hart tournament quarterfinal matches. Again, there's no story here. The tournament, only the tournament is the story. No, the tournament is just a bunch of fucking matches because that's all the hardcore marks know how to fucking book. And I still, for the life of me, can't understand why you saddled Powerhouse Hobbs with QT Marshall. What QT Marshall is does not fit to me, my opinion, the type of presentation you should have for a Powerhouse Hobbs who should be a Powerhouse big fight kind of feel guy. You don't have that here with QT Marshall in his corner. And forgive me here, as much as I've been a fan of Dustin Rhodes' work over the years, this is fucking ridiculous. Sitting there bleeding like that, like a stuck pig, is fucking stupid. The amount of shit that he was able to get in, fucking stupid. I understand you weren't going to make it a full squash, but Power Hobbs, House Hobbs shouldn't have needed that much to be able to beat this fucking guy. That was horse shit. That was not a good match. That was horse shit. And then you look at guys again. Just because you put them on TV, that's nice, but you're not doing anything with them ultimately. Miro versus Anthony Henry. Yes, he's getting featured every week. Yes, that's a good thing. Is it really that fucking hard to find something substantive for him to do? Other than a 60 to 90 second cult leader like rambling promo and then come out and squash a guy in a couple of minutes? Like, is it really that hard? And I know some of you are going to point to, well, the Bullet Club Gold segment. And there's your feud right there, Mr. Smarty Pants, with FTR and CM Punk and Ricky Starks. Does that even really fucking count? 
Like, that's a bitch-ass rivalry right there, if you even want to call it that. Not to mention the Bullet Club, especially this version of it, is a fucking joke. You've got some decent talent. Like, you look at that Bullet Club gold faction, like, Jay White is a solid talent. He was good on the mic in this segment. The Guns are an up-and-coming team. Juice Robinson, bless his heart, he went from being C.J. Parker in NXT years ago to actually doing something decent for himself in wrestling because he got away from the WWE shit show. But yeah, like, this is about the best you're going to get, I guess. It just shouldn't be that fucking hard. You need more stuff that has more purpose. Juice Robinson versus Ricky Starks. Owen Hart tournament, quarterfinal match, solid stuff. Again, though, the stuff involving Punk and FTR and the other Bullet Club members, whatever. Like, you bring back CM Punk and this is what you stick him into. Where he's not getting, like, that featured shine. He's kind of blending into a group. It's really dumb booking, in my opinion. Speaking of dumb booking, here's one thing if you were going to end Jade Cargill's reign... But you put the belt on fucking Botchlander. Ooh, that was the plan. Well, the plan was stupid from the beginning. She fucking sucks. I mean, seriously. How do you watch this match with Lady Frost, as sloppy and botchy as it fucking was, and think that she is any damn good? Real talk. The fuck is wrong with you? She sucks. You couldn't have found somebody else on this roster that was better? Well, you know what? Knowing AEW and how they treat the women wrestlers and how, how bad some of them are, frankly. Uh, maybe you couldn't have. God, this was bad. And she's going to be yet, a, yet another one of these people that AEW puts on TV sometimes and doesn't really do shit with them. Going to be like fucking Rio. Oh, Rio didn't even used to freaking be on the show half the damn time. Uh, and then you got this backstage segment. Why in the hell is Sean Spears making an appearance out of nowhere? Looking like he wants to challenge the TNT champion Christian Cage. I mean, Luchasaurus. I mean, Christian Cage to a match. You know, this dynamic between Christian and Luchasaurus where Luchasaurus technically won the belt, but Christian is the TNT champion. It's actually kind of funny. And I like it. I like it. It's one of the few good things they got going on right now. Uh, the main event of this show, you know, at least you could say there was history here, so there's some bit of a story to tell, and at least, like from a presentation standpoint, this is where shit is much better than Dynamite. They actually devote some time to telling that story. Now that part, they did well here on this show, right? Like, there is a temporary, there's a temporary attachment to a long-range story from the past. Now it doesn't, it isn't nearly the same as this is a rivalry that has different ebbs and flows and shit. Like, but at least they're making acknowledgments and telling you why the fuck you should care about this match. I mean, it was about what you would expect a Roderick Strong and Samoa Joe match to be with a predictable outcome of Samoa Joe winning. And then at the end, he ends up fucking up Roderick Strong and CM Punk is on commentary the whole time and he's coming in and you know how everybody's worried and Adam Cole's there and uh, the hell does all this come from and now you'll get uh, Samoa Joe and CM Punk in the semifinals of the Owen Hart tournament you know I will say some good things about this show that some of the talent featured on this show is good right MJF yes absolutely some of the guys in Bullet Club Gold, absolutely. Ricky Starks, absolutely. FTR, sure. CM Punk, absolutely. Samoa Joe, yes. Like, they have some decent talent here, right? In terms of the roster for this show? Luchasaurus and Christian, hell yes. Powerhouse Hobbs, yes. Miro, yes. Like, the talent here is legit good. And uh, devoting a little bit more time to the individuals and the characters, also good. It doesn't feel quite as crash test dummy as Dynamite, also good. So there are positives here. And I have to be careful because it doesn't feel like the rush shit show most weeks that Dynamite does to not automatically just say ADW Collision is great because it doesn't feel like Dynamite. 
Collision needs to be judged on its own merits. You can make some comparisons, yes, and there are certainly some things that are fucking better. But at the end of the day, this show felt largely like fucking filler. We're three weeks in now, and you tell me where you are pointing to one really interesting story. Where is one really interesting story? It's about the Owen Hart tournament, which whatever. But you can't really say what CM Punk is doing right now is incredibly interesting. Can you? Tell me one eerily interesting story that makes you want to come back and watch more. You can't because it's not there yet. And that shit shouldn't be so hard. And yet somehow for Tony Khan, your fucking messiah of wrestling, it absolutely is. And maybe at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. Because this show is going to get to a place very quickly where it's watched by 500,000, 450, 400,000 viewers. And you're going to just have devalued everybody that you put on this Saturday night show. But fuck it, whatever. So maybe you're not going to invest that much in stories and it's just going to be a two-hour rampage. I don't freaking know. But it just, it shouldn't be that hard. And they need to do better. Because this can be their best show consistently. But you got to give people a reason to care. And they're not doing enough of that so far.